a little bit about 8670 steel and some testing. So we've got these blanks right here. These are about 40 thousandths behind the edge. You can see I actually need to get back on the grinder and thin this out a little bit more before I put a bevel on there. Okay, so those are about 40 thou. These are the survivors right here, and these are at uh, 20 thousandths with a 15 degree per side. Just a rough edge, belt edge, uh, then deburred on the ceramic here. So these three are survivors. These two did not survive the testing. These guys did not survive. Was it the heat treat? Is it the steel? No. One thing I can tell you for sure with my rudimentary caveman testing that I'm doing is that these guys are just under 10 thousandths behind the edge with a 15 degree per side. All my angles are always going to be 15 degrees per side. I'm never going to increase the angle because it cuts like shit. So everything for me in my knives is about cutting quality. It's got to be thin and it's got to have low bevels. As you can see, the 15 degrees per side actually shows up as a micro bevel right there. But this thing just doesn't survive. It just didn't survive being at about, these are just under 10 thousandths, about 9 thousandths behind the edge. The 20 thousandths doesn't have a problem whatsoever. And so we'll kind of do a little show and tell and I'll show you guys what that looks like. I'll show you guys quarter inch aluminum rod and we have it here on an anvil, okay? And we're gonna be hammering it with a hatchet. So these are the ones that are 20 thousandths behind the edge. And we'll go ahead and just baton through this and we'll see what And you can see, let's get the light on there. The 20 thou has no damage. So 20 thousandths doesn't take any damage. If we come into these guys right here, these ones are at about 9 thousandths, 10 thousandths behind the edge with a 15 degree per side. This also has the same edge geometry. Okay, this is also 15 degrees per side, but 20 thousandths behind that shoulder. Uh, this one's 9 thousandths behind the shoulder, so half of that. Uh, these are all part of the same batch. They were all heat treated the same. Uh, they all got the uh, cold treatment, the sub-zero treatment. But I want to show you guys kind of the limits of geometry for 8670. This is about, you can't get it thinner than 9 thousandths. So if I want to push this geometry, I'm going to have to look for a different steel. It looks like the geometry I'm going to choose for the behind the edge angle is going to be about 15 thousandths. So I'm going to kind of meet it halfway. I'm not designing a knife to be a good cold chisel, you know what I mean? I'm designing a knife that's going to cut good. So these knives will probably hold up good for just regular cutting in the right person's hands. But if you want a knife that's designed for a cold chisel, it's got to be a little bit thicker, it looks like. And the problem with that is your cutting quality goes down the shitter, okay? The thicker you are behind the edge there, the higher the angle you have on your bevels, your edge geometry, it just cuts like shit. And that's not what I'm about. That's not what interests me in knives. I'm not interested in making a cold chisel because I can go to the store, buy a pack of six pack of Husky cold chisels. They're not using insane steel. They're not doing anything crazy with the heat treat. So it doesn't fucking matter. You know what I mean? It's, it's all geometry. So just know what you're paying for when it comes to this stuff. Uh, again, I'm gonna show you guys Destruction testing of this 8670. It breaks my heart. I put a lot of work into this knife right here, but only the fucking strong survive. So here we go. Boom. Fucking destroyed. Done. Next. This one seemed to hold up a little bit better there. But yeah, only the fucking strong survive. And so these guys didn't survive. Get out of here, okay? So we're gonna take these ones right here and we're gonna put these guys at about 15 thou behind the edge, maybe 12, I'll try to push that, ride that line. But it looks like with 8670 steel, with the heat treat I put on here, it can't be pushed to 9 thousandths behind the edge. Now then, could it be maybe the heat treat? Yeah, it definitely could be. Uh, there's definitely lots to explore, you know. It's, it's not like anybody has the, uh, you know, the exact science behind all this stuff, you know. We're all just kind of figuring this stuff out as we go. Metallurgy is much more of a practice than it is an exact science. Uh, yeah, so we got five blades that survived, okay. The rest did not survive. <laughs> these were bad knives. In fact, I would have just enjoyed using these things with that thin geometry. The cutting quality was fucking great. But 
the thing is, yeah, we got to test. We got to see what the limits of this stuff is. You know, I can't just send stuff out without seeing, you know, what the limits of it are, you know, is because people are going to be doing that stuff. And, you know, I want to see for myself what's going on. What are the limits to it? And you have to break it to see what the limits are. And so, yeah, I enjoyed the uh, actual 9,000th cutting geometry, uh, 15 degrees per side. It cut like a freaking champ. It was very enjoyable. But it's not going to be able to handle any kind of extreme hard use. Now, with these other knives at 20 thousandths, 20 thousandths cuts like shit. So I'm not designing these knives to hold a 20 thousandths, 15 degrees per side geometry. I'm going to meet it halfway. So we need to take these guys right here and drop them down to 15 thou uh, behind the edge so that we get increased cutting quality because otherwise the cuts will just wedge. It won't cut the way that you want. It'll cut like shit. So it looks like we can't go past this right here. This is the limit. This is too thick. This will hold up to the aluminum right here, okay? But I'm not designing a knife, like I said, to cut aluminum. That's not the end-all, be-all. It's a cool little test to do, but at the end of the day, when I ship these knives out, they're not going to be designed to cut the aluminum, okay? Because I'm going to drop the geometry down between 20 and 10 thousandths. So now you see the limits there. Uh, what's interesting, too, is that with this steel right here, we'll do a quick test on this guy. This is 51, or 52 100. And you can see kind of what more alloying does to increase the strength. And this is about 10 thousandths. And this will actually hold that 10 thousandths geometry. Now, is that to say that 8670 can't? Well, no. Maybe there's some little quirk with the heat treat that's yet to be discovered to make it uh, do that. And, uh, you know, that's kind of what we're doing here with all this knife stuff is we're exploring the metallurgy. We're, we're seeing what the limits of things are. And definitely, I need more equipment. Okay, I'm not going to lie. I need more equipment and more resources and more time, to be honest, to do all this stuff. All this stuff takes a tremendous amount of time, takes a tremendous amount of resources to do. And I'm hoping to get to the point where I'm making an excellent product that people want to buy to then fuel this research, all this cool stuff we could explore together. But let's get a quick test of this uh, 52100 for you guys. 10 thousandths behind the edge, 15 degrees per side. Good cutter. All right, we got the 52100 test blade here, 15 degrees per side, about 10 thou behind the edge, and let's test this guy. Uh, in my previous testing, we got some deformation. And we could see, not so much actually. This actually held up good. Round with 8670, it's still a fun steel. I still want to explore more with it, but it has its limits, and these are kind of the limits of 8670 uh, when you try to run it at a high, high hardness. Now, what is the exact hardness of this 8670? I don't know. You know, I don't have a Rockwell testing machine. Uh, you know, you guys that are curious out there, uh, it costs $50 to get just one of these blades tested. Okay, so I can't afford that right now. That's $50 I can put towards something else to actually make me money. Uh, you know, spending $50 to get these things Rockwell tested, it's not going to do anything for me because I only get one of these tested. Honestly, you almost need each one tested several times, and I can't afford that right now. So, I mean, if you, if you want to see something like that, I mean, yeah, we can maybe set up something where you guys can donate to see stuff like that. But otherwise, right now, I just, I don't have the capability to do that. Uh, in the future, I plan on getting an uh, even heat kiln and a Rockwell hardness testing machine. But it looks like everything, at the end of the day, is going to set me back about 3500 bucks. So, I'm not fucking begging for money right now. I'm just letting you guys know the reality of my situation here. So, that's kind of where we're at. Uh... Yeah, stay tuned. I'm going to get some handles on the uh, survivors, uh, the ones that didn't survive. Fucking out of here. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. So I'll, I'll share everything I can with you guys. You guys will get a cool chance to see some uh, pretty rigorous testing on all these steels. I just actually sent out the Vanix LMAX S35VN Nitro V uh, CPM154. And, and some AEBL, I send all that stuff out to Heat Treat, to uh, Brad over at uh, Peter's Heat Treat. So when we get that stuff back, we'll see if it survives this aluminum rod, and we'll check it at different geometries too. We'll see if we can push that illustrious 10 thousandths behind the edge, because I think that is a... And the reason why the 10 thousandths behind the edge is such a, a milestone for these cutting is, like I said, the quality of the cut. It's, it's a difference between kind of wedging and getting stuck through stuff, and just lasering through. So that's important. That's a very important overlooked aspect of what makes a knife cut amazing. Not just the steel, but that geometry behind the edge is very important. 
So thank you guys for watching. I appreciate your guys' viewership. And yeah, stay tuned. We'll put out some more videos in the future. I want to kind of hustle here. I got to clean this little shop area up. You can see it's just a freaking mess. Uh, but I've been busy with work. In fact, I got to get ready for work right now. So take it easy, dudes.